to Dr. Sudhir Bhandari, sir, for his talk. Thank you very much, sir. At the onset, I would extend my profound thanks to Dr. Bansi Sabu and his team of Dai Care for having invited me. In fact, it is going to be very interesting that very important, the bottom line is that whenever we see a diabetic patient, we need to have a perfect glycemic control. We need to understand the pathophysiology of the diabetes, how diabetes takes the turn with the passage of time. The day one diabetes is diagnosed, 50 percent of data cells are knocked out, and over the period of time, all type 2 diabetic patients gradually become insulinophilic and they start behaving like type 1. And here is the need of intervention in the form of these enhancements. When to consider starting insulin in type 2 diabetic patients, when they are significantly hyperglycemic, they have inadequate glycemic control, intolerant to oral drugs. If the pregnant lady or the lady gets pregnant, there is a add-on therapies like the steroids, etc., which has a diabetogenic effect, acute stressful hospitalization, and many other where you require insulinization to be done immediately. Decline in the beta cell marks the progression of diabetes, which has been very well documented by UK PDS, and then the insulin becomes the best way to manage the insulinopenic stage of the diabetes to prevent the complications and the bad outcomes. The basal insulin is the first line insulin initiation approach in type 2 diabetes. Basal only therapy in combination with UADs established the first line approach, which has been very well documented everywhere. Why do guidelines state about when to start insulin? All these guidelines suggest that insulin is very important to be started well in time. The timings of adding insulin in your therapeutic armamentarium is very important. ADA, ESED, ASF all have been recommending and now the status of insulin has shifted still upwards to the beginning or the very early in the introduction of the therapeutic armamentarium. The basal insulin need to be started with the optimal doses and you could start with 0.1 to 0.2 microgram per units per kilogram per day, build it up gradually every third and fourth day to the optimization of the insulinization, which is very important. So there are two components of insulin therapy, starting the right basal insulin and optimizing the doses, which is very important. Basal insulin will counteract the hepatic gluconeogenesis between the meals and the other. That is very important. And this is responsible for the early morning hyperglycemia. Most individuals with type 2 diabetes will achieve adequate control with addition of basal insulin. So this is the crux when we start the basal insulin. There are two components of diabetes, the fasting hyperglycemia and post-meal hyperglycemia. It is more important to fix fasting fast. Lowering the fasting glucose will lower all the PG values throughout the day and thus will also reduce postprandial glucose, which will be very important. And hence, fixing the fasting should be the integral part of the approach to have the perfect glycemic control. And basal insulin takes care of fasting hyperglycemia, bringing down all the post meal levels also to the below earlier level, and which is so important. Another very important thing, so there is a lot of relevance of different components of this glycemia, fasting is post prandial and where the fasting hyperglycemia contributes significantly to all the levels of HB1AC and there lies the key that how important it is to control the fasting hyperglycemia. Similar picture has been seen in other Asian countries and that's the reason it is very important to handle the fasting hyperglycemia which contributes significantly at all the levels of uh, HB1AC. Fix the fasting which has been poor very well in four key steps. It takes care of median HB1AC, targeted HB1AC is very well achieved with the basal, SNPG levels are achieved with the basal, fewer hypoglycemic episodes which are much better in case of basal insulins than biphasic insulin. Weight gain is also much lesser with the basal insulin than biphasic, which is very common in it, and less increase of base circumference. The 4D study provides a clear indication 
that prandial and biphasic insulin formulations are suboptimal choices for insulin initiation and probably expose patients to an unnecessary high risk of hypoglycemia without clinically important benefit. This is very important and hence we need to be very careful about it. Hence, fewer hypoglycemic issues and the less we get are the forte of the basal insulin which takes care of that. An ideal insulin supplement therapy should be with physiological insulins. We know in type 2 diabetes there is a loss of phase 1 and this physiological action is quite well mimicked by basal insulins and later sometimes when combined with the folas so that we beat out the classical results. And glycemic changes with basal insulin are much better documented if they combine with the proteins and hence it has a great So what are the strengths of the basal analogs versus anti-aging that we traditionally use? Longer, steep, uh, straight line action on the basal insulins, the flatter profile, the less intrapatient variability and decreased hypoglycemic risk, it is more important. We take time to convince the patient to start insulin and with this strength of decreased hypoglycemic risk probably straight in our advice become strengthened. Patient should be advised to adequately mix in suspension to minimize variability, which is also one of the very important benefits of the basal insulin. Another strength of the basal insulin is that long-term CV safety of basal insulin, which has been very well depicted in origin trial, and this also gives a spread to the uses of basal insulin. The long-term durability of basal insulin has an origin trial, and it has a stable action up to almost seven years, which is very well documented in this trial. This suggests that early use of insulin can provide durable glucose control with low risk for hypoglycemia and weight gain. And hence, there is a strength of starting very early basal insulin, but more important is to optimize the doses so that the patient has lesser complications and lesser issues later. Recognizing inadequation of oral therapy at the diagnosis. This is a very important slide. 50% of beta cells are not done. Yearly, we use 4 to 7% of beta cell marks. This beta cell optosis makes a patient in the span of 8 to 15 years totally insulinopenic. Unfortunately, in India, the introduction of insulin is much later when the patient becomes insulinopenic. One of the most important criteria to analyze the insulinopenic stage of the patient is a patient having uncontrolled diabetes in three OIDs, losing weight and persistent hyperglycemia. Losing weight is one of the most important signs of insulinopenia and hence we need to be mentally prepared knowing the duration of the diabetes that here the patient is becoming insulinopenic at right time to introduce and optimize the doses of basal insulin. Increased hyperglycemic symptoms with weight loss as I already talked to you. hp one is, is constantly about 7 and duration of diabetes more than 5 years. Probably we have to pick up. So one of the important aspects for a clinician is to pick up the insulinopenic stage of the patient and that becomes a point of introduction of basal insulin and to build up the doses. This is a very important. Early basal supported oral therapy. This is a, one of the very important strategy of prevention of diabetic progression and diabetes related complications that you support the oral therapy with the introduction of basal. And this is very important. If you add on basal right in time for the OAD therapy, probably there is a consistent maintenance of hb one c and which is very well documented. The initiating basal therapy in type 2 diabetes has a great advantage of flat serum insulin concentration for 24 hours and insulin glargine is characterized by lack of pronounced peak and duration of action of approximately for 24 hours and that's very important almost physiological things happen. Similarly, the basal insulin led to greater and safe HB1EC lowering than oral anti-diabetic drugs alone. Basal insulin led to twice the number of patients reaching goal. Similar hypoglycemic event rate compared to the OAD intensification and greater treatment satisfaction. The sense of well-being which comes with the introduction of basal insulin, many of the patients you will find go to the why didn't you insist upon me to start with basal insulin earlier 
which are having such a status of well-being that the fatigue is totally gone. This basal supported oral therapy study is a wonderful effect combined with the patient on sulfonylurea. The introduction of both allows reduction of sulfonylurea doses in type 2 patient failing to achieve control work on oral drugs. This basal supported oral therapy with insulin glargine is useful strategy in clinical practice without causing serious hypoglycemia and sometimes you get a chance to reduce the sulfonylurea when you combine the basal insulin. This allows the sulfonylurea patient who have failed to achieve good glycemic control have wonderful good control of sugar without having hypoglycemia when you build up the sulfonylurea doses. This basal therapy, when added on to all other antidiabetic drugs, it has a great advantage. There has been a meta-analysis to assess the efficacy and safety of BPP4 inhibitors plus insulin in type 2 diabetic in all the, almost seven studies with comprising more than 3,000 patients show significant data that when patients on BPP4 inhibitors complemented with the basal insulin, there was a significant reduction in IPVLC decrease in 2 hours post-prandial glucose and increase in proportion of patients reaching the HPVC less than 7. These supported that combination therapy could serve as a potential therapeutic strategy that offers an alternative option for patients inadequately controlled on, on the anti-diabetic drug and hence the basal support gets tremendous to the achievement of the targets which you can have. Suppose a patient is not as yet to inhibitors and if you provide the basal support it has also the addictive and the great advantage as depicted in 78W study. Mean at given AC reduction was zero. Fasting plasma glucose also fell down. Body weight reduction of almost 2 kg. No increase in risk of hypoglycemia. And mean insulin doses reduction was also zero when combined with potential inhibitor. So probably the basal support in multiple kinds of oral therapies have the great advantage. What to do with other medications? Suppose you want to start basal insulin. No contraindication use continue metformin if the patient is on. Continue secret about like the BPP4 inhibitors. Continue as yet to inhibitors unless high risk of the side effects are there. Reduce thiosylate anidons. And most of the time, I think you may not be alter the dose of sulfonylia, but sometimes it may be required to prevent the high food. But definitely basal is going to have much better metabolic control. What do we do when we plan for basal initiation, initiation? The most important is that prepare the patient, initiate, explain how to start and try the basal insulin. The day one you think of starting basal insulin probably you need to devote intensely ongoing educational support and continue monitoring and adjusting the therapy. What does to initiate the basal insulin? What dose to initiate the basal insulin? The starting dose depends on blood sugar level and the body weight. This is very important to have the basic idea of basal insulin doses. Suppose a patient is 60 kg, HPVC 8% or 9%, there's a different doses. 60 kg, 0.2 units per kilogram, 8 HPVC give 12 units, 9 HPVC give 18 units, 80 kg, you give 0.2 units per kilogram and 50 units and similarly 100. So most important thing is that you need to calculate the basal doses as per the HP1AC and the patient, the BMI and the weight of the patient and that you need to start the optimal doses and then optimize further, which is very important. Difference in the starting level of insulin, this is very important. Multiple studies have been there and there is a mean insulin starting doses are 0.16 to 0 0.09 units per kilogram. The starting dose of insulin range from 0 0.12 units per kilogram in UK and Canada to 0 0.21 in Spain and Turkey. So there is a lot of variation depending upon the body mass. But the SOLV study also con confirms that the doses have to be adequate and timing has to be perfect at the same time again you need to give. The titration is very important and after three months treatment, most patients achieve a fasting blood glucose less than 120 mg and HBNC AC of less than 7.5 or postprandial blood glucose less than 180 mg per cent when you give adequate calculated doses which is very important. Treat to target trial which was a very 
important card that we gave you the total insight how to calculate the doses of insulin starting with 10 units per day which is very important patient had their initial insulin dose increased to target and fasting plasma glucose of 100 or less which was the way those needed to be calculated physicians driven dietitian algorithms are sometimes very complicated for most of the patient adjusting insulin doses using a weekly average of 2 to 4 fasting plasma glucose insulin concept of patient self dietitian was first validated in the at Plantas study in 2006 in patient familiar with insulin and this is very important. Simple patient directed dietitian algorithm have been successfully used. One unit dose adaptation every day as per inside, two unit dose adaptation every third day at Plantas, two to four units dose adaptation every three days at Plantas and Venetian, three unit dose adaptation every three days predictive and dietary. So this is very important. Are simpler dietitian algorithms better? Yes. Percentage of patients achieving an endpoint at human AC and due to no hypoglycemic events, which was very well documented. Higher percentage of patients reached glycemic target without hypoglycemia with use of simple algorithm one or two than using the algorithm. Role of acidity cannot be undermined, it is an integral part of maintaining the sugar profile when you use. Basal insulin. How to shift a patient from pre-mixed to basal insulin when it was a better, smoother, persistent insulin levels with no hypo, no weight gain. So, and most of the time when we treat the patient first time, they are pre-mixed. So there is a definite formula that how a pre-mix can be changed with the basal insulin. The daily dose of pre-mix multiplied by 0.7 multiplied by 0.8. The glargine dose comes. This is one of the very important things when you want to give a smoother insulin without high dose. Suppose a patient is on total premix dose of 80 multiplied by 0.7 and multiplied by 0.8, it turns out to be 10. And this is the way that you can calculate the glargine doses which need to be given at a fixed time, which is very important. There is a very interesting landmark trial by all our colleagues which shows that. So the very interesting diabetic status in India, the 20% patients are under control. Average diabetic patient is obese. 18% patient have micro and macrovascular complication, and five times higher risk of complication in all these obese diabetic patients. That's a unique composition of diabetic population in Kerala. Another very good or very interesting outcome of this study is that no additional benefit in glycemic reduction in patient group receiving more than 3 or 3 OIDs. Only 1 in 4 is taking insulin and only 9.2% at HbA is 9.2 the insulin is started which is very late in their career. A timely step up of therapy from OID to insulin is important for achieving glycemic control. So need of early and timely insulin initiation is very important. And we need to have early therapy in physiologically intelligent will provide long-term health benefit for type 2 diabetic patient. Early insulin therapy overcomes the beta cell exhaustion and optosis. So imagine 50% beta cell knockdown on day one, 4 to 5% getting aptose every year after three years. Start the insulin early, you preserve the remaining beta cells and probably you could delay the patient requiring basal bolus or patient requiring a lot of insulin supplementation by preventing the optosis of the beta cell, which is very important. I just wanted to give an example of a patient who has an inadequate control on three drugs, comorbid condition like hypertension and overweight, which all of us encounter. And probably he has a very high fasting hyperglycemia also. Probably the basal look the most appeared for, for him. And the advantage of basal largely you have to remember the one formula. Once a day, a 2.2 units per kilogram body weight, which could be plus or minus a little bit, and 3, you can tighten it every third day plus 2 if the patient is having under correction or fasting hyperglycemia, or you can reduce if the patient is having lower fasting. Rate. So, 1, 2, 3 is the figure which you should remember for the margin which you can do with the weight. And basal insulin brings down the post-prandial glucose also, as we talked about. 
and definitely it brings the better glycemic control and fits the fasting per should be the main criteria. Basal has a certain advantage compared to three weeks because of lesser weight gain, the lesser hypoglycemic attacks, and 30.6 percent of the targeted glucose, which is IG. And I would say that I just come to some of the important slides which will help you to conclude, sir. It is a lot of so. If you start early basal insulin, fix fasting first with the basal insulin, you start with the right dose and tighten adequately, the step by nutrification, intensification of basal plus is very important. And take home points are calculate doses of glargine proactively based on human AC and body weight. Dietation should be done proactively either by doctors or the patient based on various available algorithms and try to up the glargine dose to target fasting blood glucose to hunt. So proactive initiation, proactive upgradation, and proactive control of fasting blood should be the baseline when we start using.